Hello everybody, Andrea Majewski here. It's really sunny coming through here, so I hope the video quality won't be too bad, so I apologize in advance. Um, but what I wanna to talk to you guys about today is if you're thinking about starting your own dental hygiene practice, but you're nervous because you don't know what to do, where to start, you don't know anybody who might have their own, or you just don't know who to talk to, and it just probably seems very over, um, overwhelming and very um, daunting to you. But let me tell you that those are completely normal. If you weren't nervous, if you weren't concerned, if you weren't worried about following the rules and doing all of the right things, then that wouldn't be normal. I had started my um, dental hygiene practice about a year ago in November. So November 20, what's the year? November 2018. <laughs> and let me tell you, I didn't know anything. I have not opened up my own practice. I have not... Um, had any reception experience or like business manager experience, none of that. I was um, a dental receptionist back when I was a dental assistant at age 19, but that was so long ago that I don't really consider that any experience. But I just started it because I wanted to. Now, granted, you probably have to have that personality where you're motivated to just do it. Because if you don't, then you likely won't be able to get started and move past all of the hurdles that you will have to do. And by hurdles, I mean having to realize how much it costs to open up your own business. Whether you want a mobile practice where you go to people's homes or you have your own um, dental hygiene office in your own home like I do, um, plus I do have a mobile one also, but, or if you want to open up at a storefront somewhere. So all of those have different hurdles. If you think about it, if you have a mobile practice, that's probably the easiest way to go hurdle-wise because you don't have all of the additional expenses of a physical location. But it's not easy because you have to go to people's houses. You can only see a certain amount of people per day because you're going to other people's houses. You, you need to plan your time accordingly so you're not you know, going all over the place and just hopefully staying in one location or two. Um, I talk more about my um, mobile practice and how I keep that organized. A lot of mistakes that I did make at first because I had nobody to talk to, but I talk about all of that in another video. So we, we don't have to talk about that now, but this is just mainly talking about, I want you guys to just go for it. Like I want you to be inspired to go for it. I get many messages, like many messages every single day from people saying, I am so um, uh, jealous basically of what you, you, you do because I would love to do that. And I say, well, why not? Go for it. If you need help, I'm here to help you. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not perfect either, trust me. I, I still don't know everything. Insurance is one of them. I had started direct billing um, maybe like three months ago. So I'm dealing with all of the insurance stuff now. And trust me, I have so much to learn every day. It's so much work, mainly because I don't know what I'm doing. So I do ask a lot of questions. But did that stop me from opening up my own dental hygiene practice? No. The fact that I don't know anything about insurance, did that stop me from not being able to bill out to the insurance companies and make more money in the long run? No, because initially I was seeing patients where it was cash only, but people don't have that kind of cash, so they would go somewhere else. Once they, they knew that I could submit it to their insurance first, they were all for it and I started seeing patients like crazy. So many patients where I've had to say, I'm booking a month out, you know, which is pretty good for somebody who just started, right? So just do it, you guys. If you want to, do it. But having that said, it depends on where you live because not everybody can start their own dental hygiene practice, which is sad. But thankfully, where I am, we can, so I took full advantage. I hope this helped you. Please let me know if you have any questions. But if you're thinking, oh, I don't know if I can do it, just do it. Just do it. If you're really that nervous, then of course, do some research first. You know, see, well, can I afford it? If I can't, how do I take out a loan? How do I plan to pay off the loan? How do I plan to get patients? All of that. 
think about it, do the research. If you need help, I do have a course to help you called um, Mobile RDH Academy, where I go through everything. Literally, there's no stone that's not turned over, where I talk about everything from when I had first started even just thinking about my own practice. I, I actually talk about my thoughts through the whole thing. In fact, I do have a video where I had just got done a meeting um, talking to a dental company rep to order a sterilizer, a piezo, all kinds of things. And in the video, I was kind of like, oh my God, you guys, I think I'm going to throw up. Like that's how honest I am. Okay. So that course will help you. Even if you're still not sure if this is for you, take that course and then you will have a pretty darn good idea afterwards. The good, the bad, the everything you guys, I share it all and I continue to do updates inside that course because there's so much to learn. So many new things are coming up. So thank you guys so much for listening. If you haven't yet, please make sure to click like, <laughs> like, so I know people are actually watching and click subscribe as well, because as of today, we have 10,200 subscribers, which is kind of cool. It doesn't mean anything for me. Like I'm not making any money off of YouTube or anything, but it's just kind of neat for me to see that people are actually watching and listening to me. So have a, have a, have an amazing day. And I'll talk to you guys very soon. Thanks so much for listening.